The interviewer name is Emily Brown. This is the 20th anniversary oral history project. It is March 14th, 2018. It is 1.30 p.m. The subject is Frank Wiseman. This is the Rio Grande Valley chapter. Now you just said to not put anything else, this is my name and Rio Grande Valley chapter, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. My name is Frank Wiseman. I am a member of the <coughs> Rio Grande Valley chapter, Texas Master Naturalist. Well, in 2001, there was an article in the newspaper here in Harlingen about the Master Naturalist uh, being uh, forming a chapter here. And I had first heard about the Master Naturalist from my sister-in-law, Sue Wiseman, who was a member of the first uh, class in the Austin area, the capital Master Naturalist. So she said, uh, you know, you probably would be very interested in joining the Master Naturalist because you really learn a lot about nature and especially about plants, which I know you and I are so much, uh, so very much interested in. So in 2002, we put in applications and we were informed that we would be uh, limited to 25 in the chapter, and I was very nervous about being a member of the first chapter, but lo and behold, I became a member, I was accepted, and we started training in February of 2002, and we continued our training through uh, the month of May. Uh, back in those days, we were not allowed to do volunteer work, so we only attended classes, and then after we uh, uh, graduated from our class, training, then we were allowed to do our volunteer work. So between the months of May and December, we got our 40 hours in, and at the end of December, we had a graduation ceremony here in Harlingen at the Harlingen Chamber of Commerce, where we were uh, officially receiving our uh, certification and our pens, and we graduated. Is that all right? Perfect. Okay. Perfect. So will you speak a bit more? Okay, all right. I, I realize that now. Um, so uh, what roles or roles have you played in the chapter? Uh, after we decided that we would try to form a chapter, Jesus Franco and Tony Reisinger, our two uh, chapter leaders, our sponsors, uh, got a few of us together to form a committee to see if we could uh, get a slate of officers and form the chapter. I think there were about four of us at the first meeting and we sort of divided up the responsibilities of the chapter officers by what we thought we could do. Since I had been a secretary for the local Audubon Society and was familiar with uh, minutes and uh, doing the 501c3 uh, uh, certification for the IRS, I said, okay, I'll take on the secretary. And uh, then we had another member who said that uh, he would be vice president, and another member said that uh, she would do the uh, treasurer's job. And another member who was a lawyer decided, well, listen, I know all of the state people. I can easily get our chapter certification that is needed from the chapter, our articles of organization and all of that sort of thing. And we were still lacking a president. So we started from a vice president and, and the rest of the officers. And then later, Jesus got another member of our chapter who had finished training to be our president. However, he didn't last 
any further, any much longer than uh, sign a few certificates, and then he quit. So Walter moved up into the secretary's position, and eventually we got another uh, vice president. But that was how we formed our chapter and how I got involved with organizing the first setup. And as secretary, I was involved with writing our first bylaws, our policies and procedures handbook, and our operating handbook. And other than that, we tried to start our meetings and hold uh, regular monthly meetings at different places. We, ha we first met at the high school and then uh, in some of the other places locally. I'm going to stop. Is that all right to stop like that? Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't want those people. Yeah, no, it's good. Do you want any more than that, or? Well, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, get, okay. I'm gonna get some more out of you. All right. Well, uh, so I didn't know what all to say there. Yeah. So okay. So as the uh, have you always been a board member? Yeah. You want me to talk? Mm -hmm. uh, ever since the chapter was formed, I was secretary uh, for about uh, three years, I believe, or four years, and then I became vice president when that position was uh, left open, and then I found another member of the chapter who agreed to take over the secretarial duties and the recording of hours. Uh, I have always been on the board serving in one capacity or another. In uh, 2008, I believe it was, our president and the lady who was our uh, <clears throat> education chair moved to San Antonio. So we were open for two offices immediately and of course I moved up to become president by default then and served out another two years before we had another election for officers. Uh, I have continued on the board in one capacity or another uh, to this day. What else do you want from that? Are you going to wait until you tell me to talk? No. When I, uh, when I ask you a question, you can just start talking. Oh, okay. Well, that's what I didn't understand before. Yeah. All right. So, uh, <coughs> so what, what would you say are the five best things about being a master naturalist? Uh, five things? There's probably 20, but uh, five. I think the best thing about being a master naturalist is that you get to meet uh, new people and work with people of like-minded uh, interest in nature and in all sorts of nature. I think the friendship that we have in the chapter of meeting new people and working with them, the, com the camaraderie ship that you, you gain through uh, being friends with people and just being out in the environment. Another thing that uh, I think is really uh, has helped me or is, is best to become a master naturalist is learning about not just one thing in our environment, but you go from, uh, well, here in the valley, we go from the coastal areas all the way up to the Bordas Escarpment and Rio Grande City areas where we have a change of all of the different uh, uh, ecosystems. So we're, we're blessed in that, that we have six different ecosystems here in, in the Rio Grande Valley. And we learn about all of those and the flora and the fauna that are connected with each one of those, those systems. Another thing is that uh, we, get, we get to volunteer in all of our local parks and uh, in civic uh, organizations. And uh, we do volunteer work for like putting in butterfly gardens or helping people throughout the different organizations with their projects. And then another thing is that uh, we get to go out and give presentations in the community to people like Rotary Clubs, the Garden Clubs, uh, any kind of civic organization or school that uh, wants us to come and present uh, anything about birds, plants, 
uh, reptiles, uh, in, any of our local uh, environmental uh, animals or plants. Another thing that uh, we get to do is uh, we get to give guided tours, not only for adults, but for school children. And that takes a, a good deal of time and effort for our master naturalists to learn how to do those tours and to be tour guides. And I think one of the best things that uh, master naturalists do is that they teach our members how to be a guide and uh, with, with, with children and adults, because it makes a difference whether you're leading adults or you're leading children. Uh, I think something else that uh, one of the things that uh, I have enjoyed the most about being a master naturalist is that I have got to learn everything I can about our native plants, how to rescue them, how to replant them, uh, how to, to work with the soils, uh, how to establish a, a garden, and to help others. Because uh, doing that, it gets you out in nature, uh, gets you out of the house, and uh, it keeps you young and uh, on, on, your, on your toes to how to live your life in a better way. Is that five? Okay. It'll do. So I, this was, uh, I guess, uh, so, if I say the sentence, and, and I'll have you say the sentence, I became a master naturalist too, and, how, and then completed. I had an answer for that. Now I've forgotten what I said. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'll, I'll think of something. Wait a minute until this guy goes by. I was going to say something like, "What was the, is, is I became a master naturalist too." I became a natu master naturalist to uh, learn more about our, our environment and specifically I was very interested in our native plants and I knew that that's the direction that I particularly wanted to be uh, leading myself as far as learning new things in my life and where I could go out and uh, rescue native plants, learn about native plants. Uh, bring them into uh, different areas uh, of our lo local uh, environment. Uh, we have a park in Harlingen, which I was involved in, in <clears throat> revegetating. And I said, this is going to be right down my alley. So that was one of the reasons that I really wanted to become a master naturalist, just to learn more about native plants. So. What do you uh, do or say that identifies you as a master naturalist to others? Oh, well, usually when I'm out in public, I often wear my master naturalist cap or my, my shirt or some, something, uh, article of clothing that would identify me as a master naturalist. And often people walk up to you and say, hey, what is that that you've got on? Where did you get it? And then. That leads into me telling them about Master Naturalist, our chapter, about our training, and all of the good things that they could learn and do by becoming a Master Naturalist. And so how, did, how would you describe the impact that, that you've had on the natural resources of Texas as a Master Naturalist? My biggest uh, <coughs> impact that I can uh, say as a Master Naturalist and on our environment here locally has been at Ramsey Park. Uh, I have been one of the chairmen or the crew leaders for many of the volunteers here. And we have rescued and transplanted into this park probably over 1,000 or 1,500 or 2,000 plants over the last uh, 15, 16, 17 years. And <clears throat> We have increased the uh, vegetation here in Ramsey Park 
to be one of the most diversified parks with every plant that we could find and that grows in our local environment in the Rio Grande Valley from uh, the western end to the eastern end to the northern end to the southern end. So I'm very proud of having accomplished and been a part of that. So give me an idea of what you've noticed through the uh, over time changes to the landscape or, or the people that, that you've worked with. Some of the changes that I have noticed over the last 18 years, let's say, and the people I have worked with, uh, people come and go, but some are still here. Uh, the landscape uh, in Ramsey Park in Harlingen has, ex has changed dramatically because we have transferred many uh, areas in the park into butterfly gardens, uh, bird uh, gardens, uh, if you want to say, in other words, trees that provide the seeds, the berries that birds eat, the flowers that uh, butterfly will either host on or use as nectar. Uh, I think the valley as a whole, I ha uh, observing it myself, the biggest change I see year by year is the urban sprawl, where we are losing more and more of our environment. So I think it's very important that we need certain spots in, in our parks or even in our local uh, yards or, or areas that we maintain personally to keep that for our flora and our fauna. And, uh, what hopes do you have for, for the chapter, for the Rio Grande Valley chapter, the Texas Master Naturalist Program and the, uh, the Texas Nat Natural Resources? My hopes for the Rio Grande Valley chapter as an organization is that it will continue, uh, membership will grow, that our members will continue to volunteer uh, all of their gracious time wherever they're required and wherever they really feel like they're needed and where they're going to learn something. And also how they can be stewards for the land and also to teach others uh, to appreciate what, what we have locally. Now, as far as uh, how the organization, I, I forgot, I don't the know. The Texas Master Naturalist, uh, how, what changes, or how you would, what are your hopes for the Texas Master Naturalist program and for the future? For the whole state or for just locally? Uh, I think you can go for the whole state. You pretty much answered the, the local one. Unless you want to add one. Oh, I have to think of it. Yeah. Uh, what is that, my hopes? Here. So, what hopes do you have for your chapter, the, T the Texas Master Naturalist Program, or the, the, natural, the Texas Natural Resources Future? Uh, my hopes for the chapter in the future is that it will continue to grow, be of service as it is a service organization, that our members will volunteer wherever needed and in whatever capacity they're needed. Uh, for the state organization as a whole, it's probably the, the, the same advice that I would give locally is that I hope our chapters remain vibrant and, and full of membership and uh, serving our communities in the best way that they can. Uh, I, I think in the future, what I hope for our environment is that we have some way or another that uh, we can get people to realize that our environment is so time limited and resource limited that uh, we have to take care of it. And urban sprawl has meant that we have fewer and fewer local parks that we need to maintain them. We need to maintain our refuges, uh, our wildlife areas, so that they're available for the future, for not only our living future, but our future that uh, are the people who are yet to come. Our descendants, uh, the youth of today can grow into tomorrow. 
so what is it you would like to tell the the next generation of master naturalists? I think if <clears throat> I were to tell our next generation of master naturalists one thing, it would be to be ever vigilant about our environment and especially try to take care of our land, our plants. Because if we don't have plants, we don't have butterflies, we don't have birds, we don't have reptiles, we don't have all of those things that we need in nature because they are so dependent on the plant life. Take care of the plants and the rest will come. So, Frank, I know that you've been really involved in, um, in mentoring uh, trainees. And I, I would like for if you would just talk about how you got decided to do that and, and how, what keeps you going doing that? Uh, I got involved in leading plant tours not only in Harlingen's Ramsey Park, but to going to different areas around uh, the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, I helped others uh, as guides, but we, we took people, like on a Saturday morning, we would advertise that we were having a plant tour or a plant walk and we waited uh, in a certain location. We carpooled and went all over the Rio Grande Valley to different spots. And then we would go in and we would tell the people what the plants were, how they grew, and what used them for their, uh, either as a host plant, as a nectarine plant, or for example, uh, the Texas tortoise, if they would be eating the uh, the Texas prickly pear uh, uh, tunas and, and things like that. But let me stop. I don't know where I'm getting lost here. Uh, can I get by? I'm sure you can. You asked me about mentoring, right? Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. How should I? Can I start over, or, uh, just yeah, you from can there? Start over whatever you want to say. Well, I, I can just start continue. Yeah. Uh, in addition to my mentoring or helping people learn about native plants and being a guide, I also was a mentor for our members during our training classes. Because after our education chair left and went to San Antonio, uh, I was president. And as president, I had to sort of help the new education chairperson organize the classes and maintain the classes uh, uh, schedules. And in helping with each class, I had to teach classes. And I would help the students in any way that I could. And that went on uh, from about 2006 to 2008. Uh, for about four years there, I was uh, helping with the education of the, of the program. But uh, I have always tried to help our, our members in any way that I can, in, in any, any way that they needed help. Is that enough? Uh -huh. Okay, well. Yeah. No, I just, uh, I'm trying to just is that you've done so much for the chapter. You're such a, I mean, the chapter kind of. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Because wherever the chapter went, I was there. Uh -huh. But I hate to say that. Well, but it's true, right? I don't know, but like. You don't have to worry about it sounding like you're taking credit for everything. Because without you, <laughs> it wouldn't be here. Well, that's, in many respects, that's true. Because Donna and I, the first few years, we held it together. Mm -hmm. The second year, we had a class of 43. 
And then we also had, the next year, we not only had a class in Harlingen, we also had a class in Edinburgh, one night and then the next night. And we were doing both of those classes. So, you know, and when you talk about field trips, anything like, any kind of thing that we planned back then, we were at all of them. So, that's just the way it worked. So, can you tell me a little bit about your, your work here at Q Ramsey Park and how you got started and, and how you kept it going and kept interest in it? Uh, here at Ramsey Park, I started as a volunteer with the local Audubon Society. I was the secretary when it was first organized here. And then when we started Master Naturalist, I was not only secretary for the Audubon Society, I was also the secretary for the Master Naturalist chapter. But back in 2000, the Audubon Society had made an agreement that uh, we would maintain or try to improve Ramsey Park. But the lack of water and faucets and all of that sort of thing, we were limited to a very small area in the parking lot uh, environs just, a, just around the main parking lot uh, for the, well, for the first uh, four years. Then back in 2003, we had a small committee of master naturalists who had formed, and we decided that we would develop a new garden spot with some money that a lady had, uh, who passed away was donated in her name and we decided that we would develop a butterfly garden in her name. So we ran hoses from the nearest faucet that we could find, faucet that we could find, and ran it down to this area and developed that area as a butterfly garden. We put in benches, concrete benches, uh, a, bur uh, a butterfly, uh, uh, well, a bird bath, and a standing uh, bird seed uh, thing, uh, planter, I mean a uh, bird seed uh, feeder. Then we also put in a lot of new native plants and that required water. So with the hoses that we ran down from the parking lot to this new area, we had the plants watered, we got it growing, we got it started. And that's how, as master naturalists, we developed all of the Ebony Loop, which is the southern side of the park, with about uh, 15 or 20 garden spots. So, um, do you have anything that you can think of that you might want to add to it that we haven't covered? Uh. I don't know, I've said so much. Uh, you know, what I really like to do is give credit to all the volunteers who have gone through the years and the chapter and all of our officers. I don't know, do you want, you want anything like that? Sure, that would be fine. Uh, as one of the founding members of the local chapter of the Master Naturalist, I don't want to sound uh, pious here that I have done an awful lot of work because I didn't do it by myself. Uh, I may be one of the only two remaining founding members, but the members who worked with me over the years in our chapter as not only just members, but also our officers each year contributed a wealth of information, a wealth of volunteer time, uh, effort, their sweat, their tears, uh, our com their camaraderie, and all of that over the years has meant an awful lot to me. I think Master Naturalist sort of saved my life in a way because after I retired, I was kind of stuck at home with not that much to do. And Master Naturalist got me out of the house, got me up and running and, and, and uh, doing all sorts of things that I had never thought I would do as a retired person. So in many ways, I'm very grateful to the Master Naturalist chapter for all that it's done for me.
That work? Mm -hmm. Okay, well. So, can you think of anything else? Uh, really, I think I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we can do is, uh, 